great idea in case we have to miss a, a particular day, we can go in and catch up on the YouTube right. video. Right, that's the idea. So, all right. So today though, the plan is to go over doors presentation, uh, looking at step one. So when we start off talking about the doors, this is a Weicker tool and system that we use um, developed by Weicker Corporate. It is fantastic being in the industry for quite a while myself without Weicker. I can tell you this is something that uh, other places do not have and do not use. Uh, and it is psychological and uh, very scientific on how it's put together and really helps your clients um, fall in love with you and, and, and gives you the, the best opportunity to really kind of show yourself forward um, and differentiate yourself from the competition, okay? So with Weicker, um, we do a two-step or a two-visit listing presentation, okay? So why? Why do we do two steps? Why don't we just come over Hey, Aaron, come over, take a look at my house. Great, I come over with a marketing presentation, pricing, everything, and just do it right there, which is what a lot of companies do. But why don't we, why do we do two steps? Well, isn't the first step so that you can develop some sort of rapport with your client, see the house, evaluate whether it's even a listing that you want to take on, um, yep. make sure that it's something that is in your realm, developing that relationship and viewing the home and taking pictures so that you have the information to come back and perform your CMA so you can come up with a probable price. You need background exactly. information and it takes time to process that to do a really good job. Exactly. All those are correct, right? We, How can we price the home if we haven't seen, seen it, right? Um, like Rick, your, your property up there in Mars Hill, I mean, makes a difference whether you're being inside of it or not, because from the outside, it doesn't look very good. Inside, you know, it's got all the stuff, but it looks pretty decent inside. So, you know, even in a cookie cutter neighborhood where you're like, I know that floor plan, I know what's going on, but what about the upgrades? What if, you know, what if they've got $10,000 worth of appliances and the other people have builder grade appliances? Like it all matters. So you've got to be able to accurately price the home. You've got to see it. That just makes sense, right? Um, and then the other point that you made, Heather, is on the rapport. So ultimately, we're trying to build rapport with people. We've got a hornet in here. But we're trying to build rapport with all of our, um, our, all of our clients in order to help them make that decision to list with us, right? So if you ever met someone, you've never met them before, the first time you meet them, it's always just, a, there's a little bit of ice there, right? A little bit of, hey, don't know you, you know? And, and, and you get to know each other a little bit and even just after a couple of comments, all of a sudden you can open up and things are easier. Well, that's part of it too, where the first step you're coming in cold, maybe you've never met them before. Uh, you get to build some rapport, get to, to see their personality a little bit. And that way, when you come back for step two, which is a real marketing presentation, that's already gone. You already have some rapport built and it's just a much easier process. Uh, and then the other part of that is what we're gonna go over here is the getting to know you and your home. The questions that we're asking are gonna give us the answers to the test. Because it is a test. When we do this step two, it is an absolute presentation of what are you gonna do for me? Why should I sign with you? And the step one is giving you those answers to that test, okay? So the first and foremost thing is, is we need to make sure that we have that commitment that we will do a two-step presentation with Weicker, all right? And I will also tell you, just having been in New Jersey on Monday and uh, speaking with some of the higher-ups of Weicker, and Denise Smith, who kind of runs this whole place, she sat and talked at length about this, about step one, and what Jim Weicker talks to her about. And Jim has told her, of all the tools of everything we do, step one is by far the most important. He said he would rather forego step two and just have step one and would win more listings than if he just had step two, but not step one. And our step two was pretty awesome, but the idea of that building rapport, his quote there, people buy people before they buy product or service, 
is absolutely true, and this is that people are part of that, building that rapport. So we got it. We got to do the step one. Don't get, you know, bit into that fact of oh well, I could go ahead and get the listing with just the one visit. I know you could, but it doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. All right. All right. So let's get into it a little bit. Um, the the other thing I want to preface this with is setting the appointments. So typically, when you get a listing appointment, it might be from a for sale by an owner, it might be from a call here to the office, it might be from a friend of a friend of yours that calls you up and says, hey, I heard you're in the business, uh, we're interested in selling our house. However it comes in, on that phone conversation, you need to set up, it would be a good idea to set up both appointments and let them know this is a two-step process, two-visit process. Because if you don't, it is commonplace for other agencies to do a one-visit listing presentation, right? So they, it's fair to think, for them to think that you're gonna come in with a marketing presentation, pricing, you're gonna have it all. So if you show up at the door and you don't have that, they might think you're unprepared or incompetent. You can usually talk your way out of that by showing them what you're doing, but it's better if you do that over the phone and tell them, hey, this is a two-step process. So set both appointments. Now, how far between the first step and second step do you want to be? How much time in between them do you think? As soon as possible, based on their schedule, your schedule. But if you went and set up Monday, I think Tuesday or Wednesday would be. Uh, agree. I think within 48 hours is is ideal. Uh, next day is probably best. But you could even go same day. If you met with them at 10 o'clock this morning and you're done at 11, but you're gonna meet with them at five o'clock tonight, that would be sufficient. You don't wanna meet with them at 10, be finished at 11, and then meet with them at 12. Because how much work did you do on the marketing presentation, the pricing? Not much. I don't have to do a lot of math to figure out you didn't work that hard on it, right? So there's some of that, but you don't want it to go too far because they'll start forgetting what you said they might be interviewing other people and other people might be putting some pressure on them for this now, now, now. So you want to make it as, as quick as possible. Um, so usually next day is best. I'll give you, give you enough time to do your proper pricing and marketing um, preparation. And then uh, just quick enough that they're not going to forget kind of what you said. Okay. So, but it is important that you let them know, I'm not going to have full pricing when we, when we, sit down and talk, I'm gonna see your house, I'm gonna get to know you, and I'll come back with my marketing plan and pricing, okay? All right, so some more psychology. This is uh, on the screen here is the packet. You can find it on Weigert University. You'll find it in your seller packets that Allison has back there for you. Here's a copy of it here. When on the screen you can see it, but when you see the physical copy here, part of the psychology of this especially as new agents, is just simply having a nice pre-printed packet that you're carrying with you. Psychologically, it's telling them, I know what I'm doing, I have a plan, right? I, you know, it, it's helpful, as opposed to just showing up with a pad and pen, which is what I did for years and years. And yes, it worked out fine, I got tons of listings, but it doesn't, it's not as good as this. And if you can sit down with this, and you sit down and they see a pre-printed form, you look like a professional. So there's a lot of psychology going on here. The other part of this that I find extremely helpful is everything you need to ask, everything you need to find out is already in here. So literally, not even before even going through the class, if, if you had a listing appointment right now, I could give you this packet and say, follow the packet, go, and you'll do fine. Because it, all you gotta do is ask the questions. Follow, follow the packet. So you don't need to be freaked out about going on a step one presentation. You don't need to be nervous about it. You're just going to talk to a person and find out more about them and everything you need to remember is in here. And for me particularly, that's helpful because I forget stuff. So it, you know, there's a lot of questions in here that are really key that you might forget to ask, okay? So remember to bring your packet, all right. So again, the first page is set up for that psychological effect to show it's a pre-printed packet, it's got their name on it, shows personality, et cetera. And then we move on to the second page. Um, ideally, when you first meet with them, you wanna go sit down at the kitchen table. 
Um, so if you come in the door and they say, well, what do you want to do first? You want to take the tour? You want to sit down? I advise you to sit down with them first because these are the questions we want to ask first. It also helps to kind of build that rapport before we move on to the house. The kind of tour we're going to do with the house is longer than they are probably expecting. So that's the other reason. Um, we don't want to start getting into showing the house, looking at the house, and all of a sudden they're 35 minutes, 45 minutes into seeing the house and like, when is this guy going to figure this out? Like, we want to build some rapport first and then talk about what we're going to do when we show the house, okay? So we sit down, we just have normal personal chit chat, whatever that is. And um, I, ideally you want to sit down at the kitchen table. You never want to do step two uh, on a couch or anything like that. It's incredibly uncomfortable. Uh, you're sitting down deep into the couch and you're pulling it out. Like kind of the only way you can show that to them is if they're sitting next to you, which is even more uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So you never want to do any of these on the couches or whatever. Ideally you want to be at the kitchen table, all right? But this one you could do on a couch. It's not as presentation-like, but still you'd rather be at the kitchen table, okay? Um, all right, so first question that's listed on here, if you can read that, um, I'll zoom in here a little bit. Where the first question that says there is, please share with me why you're moving. So like Ashley, you were talking earlier when we were sitting down about being personal and personable and changing things to fitting your personality. All these questions, they have a main goal, but you can say it however you want. So honestly, when I sit down with the seller, it just naturally comes out to me, my personality. I'm like, what's up? What are we doing here? That's kind of how I ask that question, right? And I, I might elaborate on that. We'll share with me while you're moving, et cetera. But you don't have to read the questions word for word. If it's helpful to you, just read them word for word, great. You don't have to, okay? Um, so that's, that's how I sit down. I was like, so what's up? Why are we here? Why, why are we moving? And let them start talking. Now the key to all these questions is not to let them give you those one word answers. Well, we need a bigger house. I know it's not one word, but it's the same idea. We need a bigger house. So then you get to play Oprah, right? Oprah is great about getting people to open up and talk further about things. So just simply say, tell me more about that. You need a bigger house? Just repeat back what they said to them, mirror them. Um, yeah, we need a bigger house because she's pregnant for the 10th time. Oh, wow. Okay. So how big of a house are we going to need? You know, so what's the true reasons behind this, right? We need a bigger house because my parents are going to be moving in with us. And we need to do that here in the next couple of weeks because their situation is deteriorating. Like, wow. Like you can see how that's impactful on maybe what you want to do to market the property. Um, why are we moving? Well, you know, we, we're, we're pregnant again and, and we know our kid's gonna have Down syndrome and we need a house that's gonna fit that. Wow, emotional, you know, what's going on here? How do we, how do we help this couple? Um, we wanna move to a different school district. That tells you some timeline issues, et cetera. So try not to let them get away with just a blanket answer there, uh, but really trying to find out what's, what's really going on, all right? So you wanna dig as much as possible. Let them talk as much as you possibly can. Uh, especially on this, the less you talk, the better. The more they talk, the more they're gonna like you. It's the way people are. So try to get them to keep talking, keep talking. Understanding, you may have to explain what you're doing. Sometimes you're like, well, why do you, why do you need to know all of this? So you just explain to them, well, as a real estate agent, my job is gonna be to get you what you want out of this transaction. So I'm trying to get myself inside your head and make sure I totally understand what it is we're trying to accomplish here. And you also have to understand certain cultures, certain countries feel differently about opening up. And so just understand that sometimes you might reach a, a culture that's really not okay with you poking and prodding into their personal life. And so just kind of read your audience with that. You gotta know certain things to, to help out, but if, if they're pushing back really hard on it, just back off as much as you need to. Okay. So please share with me why you're moving. Second question, what's your ideal time frame in making this move? Why do we need to know that? Well, if they want to move quickly, the house has to be priced to move quickly. If they can't sit and wait for maybe the highest possible price because they need to go, 
then you need to know that so you can press it accordingly. Right. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, and everything kind of falls into that, right? Well, our timeline is my husband needs to move, you know, by October, and he's going to be in Hawaii in October, whether we're with him or not, and we really don't want to do that. Okay, so October is is the is the goal. So then the point is, these are notes for now as well as later as far as helping price correcting now, but also later if things aren't moving and they say, well, we still wanna keep trying it for a little while, then it gives you some ammunition to put into that cannon and fire back at them and say, hey, I hear you, but what's gonna happen if we get to October? You're gonna be missing, kids are gonna be missing their dad, you know, you're gonna be missing your husband. Like, you know, bring out those emotional things because that's what's gonna get them to move to get, get things going. I also think it's great for helping to set expectations. You know, like if our job here is to build a relationship and be professional and build rapport, if they tell me like, well, I, I, need, to, I need to sell my house in a month, but like there's mold in the basement and things are falling yeah. apart and there's significant repairs, then it's my job to educate them. Like, I, I understand your urgency. However, with the state of the repairs that need to be done realistically, you're looking at 90 days before right. your house can be on the market. And so that way it sets the tone for expectations instead of being like the month comes and goes and they're like, well, how come, yeah. why aren't we ready yet? Well, how come I can't sell my house tomorrow? And you're like, well, because the time frame was a little you know, misunderstood. So. All right. Good, yeah, absolutely. So all that, all that matters, right? And it has to do with our marketing plan too. So we're gonna come back and using this information for a marketing plan. So to your point, you know, if we've got repair issues to talk about, we can push them hard on that. Hey, we need to get this done now. We need to call right now as we're sitting at the table and, and all that. So we're good. All right. Next question. What's most important to you in this move that you're making? What concerns do you have or do you have any concerns about this move? All right. So how do you think people will answer that question? What's most important to you? What do you think they usually say? Money, they're going to make. money is the number one answer ding 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 right mm -hmm. but it's not that's what we would assume and if I'm making an assumption on a seller that's typically what I'm gonna assume but it's not always true so if you're a mother of four and you have kids in nap times is money the most important thing to you or getting those kids through those nap times the most important thing to you right so sometimes that scheduling or the, the issues of showings or getting the house ready to show with the kids in the house or anything like that could be more important. And I can just tell I can just tell you now from experience when 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 people have young kids that are in nap times and stuff, it is life itself. So I know that when I walk into a house and I, I see those young kids, you're gonna want to come up with a plan on how you can help them eliminate showings around nap times and things like that. All right, so, but that sort of thing you need to find out. What, what to them is the most important thing? And they might say it's that time frame, or they might reach out and say, it is money all day. All day is money. Okay, all right, you, you, good to know, you know. Um, it might be something, you hear this a lot, it might be, oh, you know, we raised our family here, and it's just really important to us to have somebody else here that's gonna live a good life, raise a family here as well. Okay. Now, is that breaking some um, HUD guidelines? Yeah, it's borderline gray area. You know, you can't you can't go you can't say no to someone just because of their familial status. But but it's still good to know where their head is and where their heart is on what they're looking for, right? So just understanding what the most important thing is. The next question is to help us on some of the marketing, and so asking what are the most compelling reasons why you purchased the house. So I usually won't repeat that verbatim. I'll just say, why did you guys buy the house? Give me a couple of reasons. What's the number one reason you bought the house? And all of us who have bought a house, I think you can probably sit back and remember what the number one reason was for you. For me, my house two, two, two houses ago was the view, right? I walked in, you could see through to the windows, seeing 180 degree view of the mountains, my house i literally said that i walked in i said my house i want this this is mine that's why i bought the house the view right the house i live in now i bought it for the location location of the kids school and it has a huge unfinished basement so 
for me, that's everything. But it has, there's of course a lot of other little features, right? But the number one reason I bought that house was location, um, what it's gonna do for drive time and things like that. So find out from them, and that might be like for that house I live in now, that may not be something you realize, right? So you, you're there as a listing agent, and I say, well, it's really close to ACA, and that's why we bought it, and that's good to know, maybe you didn't realize that, and that's gonna be some good marketing to, to talk about location and where, where it fits to things, right? So sometimes they'll say things that you weren't aware of, or it's really close to this amazing restaurant or something, like, oh, really, what was that, you know? And you'll learn some things that way, okay? Next question, where are you moving? And are you working with an agent to help you with that new move? So we care about that, right? Because we want to make double the money. <laughs> we want to make money on where they're going to buy. So are they moving in town? Great. Then we'd like to work with them as a buyer's agent. I can't tell you how many times I've worked as a buyer's agent for someone and we meet up, do a buyer consultation. And then we're sitting down and talking like, well, so what's the situation with your house? Are you guys renting right now? What are you doing? Oh no, we're listed with so-and-so. You're already listed? Yeah, in fact, we just went under contract last night. That's why we're looking now to start buying. Why, why aren't you working with so-and-so? Oh, I don't know, we didn't think about it. We just thought they were the listing agent. So we, we, we saw you and thought we'd call you as a buyer's agent. Okay, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not gonna argue, but that's sad. And I can't say that's never happened to me as a listing agent either, but that's sad that that listing agent never even mentioned to them Yes, I could be your buyer's agent, right? So don't let that happen to you. Make sure you're having that conversation and asking. But of course, if they're not moving locally, say they're moving to Los Angeles, what could we do? Refer them, Refer them right? Referral money is the easiest money in this business. We'll set up a, a, a good agent with them in Los Angeles. They'll make that connection. They'll appreciate the connection. And a month later, you'll get a check in the mail for just doing a couple of phone calls and emails. So don't forget about those referrals. Do right. you have a watcher uh, referral service that we could find an agent in Los Angeles, or could we go through uh, watcher to be able to find a non-company agent? Both, okay. but typically we'd like to just bring that through myself and Allison. Okay. Because we can do that on our own. There is a Weicker referral service. Okay. But we can usually set that up on our own. Um, yep. And one of the good things about being with Wikers and kind of being a family oriented company and we get together a lot, like me and on Monday with a lot of the other owners, like I know a lot of the other owners around the country. And so sometimes it's really cool. Uh, in fact, I was meeting with a lady from Los Angeles on Monday. And so like if, um, you know, if you got a referral for Seattle, I, I know the guy to call, you know, so it's, it's kind of good having those relationships. But yeah, sometimes there's not a Weikert office in an area, and then we'll refer it to another company if we need to. Okay, so we wanna find out where they're going, right? The next question is probably the most important. Um, best question for us to ask, certainly in respects to the step two. So what do you expect from your agent or the company that you choose to represent you? So I like to kind of say that and say, in other words, what are you looking for in me? What do you need me to do to make you happy? Or I heard another agent say this, I think Bill Scott with Riker had told me this, uh, I think it was him. But another good way to ask that is, on a scale of one to 10, what is the one or two things that you need me to be a 10 at in order for you to hire me? It's a different way to say it, or a scale of one to five, what are a few things that you need me to be a five at in order for you for me for you to hire me that's another good way to ask it what are you expecting from me what are you looking for the most that you want me to be um, great at so what do you think people say to that typically communication communication ding 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 number one again and we should get you on the feud family feud man availability um, availability good yeah uh, yeah communication availability is similar in a lot of ways but yeah, communication is the number one thing that people will, will ask for. Uh, a lot of times people think, well, they, they're going to say marketing. They want to say somebody's going to give me the best price, et cetera. But most of the time, they just want someone who's going to communicate with them. Okay, 
But no matter what they say, when you, when you come back tomorrow for your step two, what do you think you're gonna to repeat to them on every slide? Let's it say it's communication. You're gonna say, so here's how we do our open houses and, and here's how I communicate to my clients when I'm doing the open house, after the open house, here's how I email you, I'm gonna text you, I'm gonna call you. This is my communication plan. And you don't even have to repeat, oh yeah, this is what you said yesterday. You just simply mention it on every single slide. But it might also be something of real note, like they might say, the number one thing to me is somebody's gonna advertise a newspaper. What? <laughs> you know, because you might say, oh really? Yeah, I would definitely ask questions like, why, why is that? Tell me more. And they say, well, you know, we've sold four houses and we happen to sell all of them through newspapers and so we think that's very important. Might be good for me to look into that for my marketing presentation, right? If that's their answer, it's an oddball answer, it's not the norm, but if that's what their most important thing is, I better figure out some newspaper ads for my marketing plan. And I'm gonna be honest with them, I'm gonna tell them, I don't think it's the best idea, I don't think it's the best use of money, but since I know it's important to you, I went ahead and put together some newspaper ads for you, okay? So some things like that could come up that aren't part of your normal marketing plan that could help you win that listing, all right? Next question, just talking about when you're making the move, when you're selling your house, what other services do you need? And that gets back to our Weikert Gold services. Do you need a moving company reference? Do you need um, insurance companies? Do you need home inspection you want to talk about a home inspection before you get your house on the market get that done beforehand uh, home warranty companies you know what, what other services might you be looking for and that's just trying to be good customer service getting them connected on everything all right and then the last question here is one that it's my least favorite and it's very important to know the answer but it's my least favorite question and I have to warn you, you may not always want to ask it. So the question is, do you have a price in mind in order to sell your home? I don't like it because there's a certain percentage of the population, number totally out of nowhere, about 25%, but in my opinion, it's usually about a quarter of the people that really do not like this question being asked. And the reason is because they're expecting you to come up with the price. And so they feel that if I tell you the price, that's gonna influence the way you're, you're viewing the decision. And in some ways it does, it shouldn't influence my actual stats, but it would influence the way I discuss the price with them, which is exactly why we wanna know it. Because if their house, if they say they wanna get 300,000 for their house and I'm doing my work and I'm saying it's worth 325, I know that conversation is gonna be fun. It's gonna be a good conversation, we're gonna come in, this isn't gonna be a problem, this, this will be good. But if I know they want 300 and my, my pricing's coming in at 275, I know I'm in for a little battle, I know I better bring more information to prove what the market's showing. Um, so it's very helpful to understand how I, I'm coming up with this stuff. All right, so there's other ways to ask this question. Now, first of all, you may not have to ask it because they may have answered it way up here, right? <clears throat> what's the most important thing to you in, in this move? And they might say, well, the price, you know, we gotta get 300 out of this house. They just answered it. You don't have to ask it again, they just said it. So a lot of times they'll, they'll mention it earlier on, so you don't have to ask it, and that's great. But if you get to this point and you still don't know, then I would start off, instead of asking directly, I would start off the question by asking about their current mortgage. It's kind of a side, side angle. In fact, we just did this yesterday on a conversation with Keisha where we got to the end and we didn't know the answer yet, so that's what I asked. I said, now what, what kind of mortgage do you have still on the place? And so I, I won't give you the exact numbers, I don't remember the exact numbers, but um, she said something like, well, I owe 70,000 still on the house, but I'd, I'd like to clear uh, 250 on it. Okay, yeah. So. It's another way of asking without asking directly, what do you want to get for the house? Um, but in, she was hesitant to say that, but by talking about the mortgage, the rest of it kind of came out in the conversation. Um, so that's a good way to ask that. Um, it's also a good 
question to ask on the mortgage because if she says, well, I owe 350 on it, and you're like, there's no way this house is worth 350, then you know that's a whole nother issue that you're gonna have to deal with, right? Um, but otherwise then, you just have to breach that subject with whoever you're talking to in the best way possible of saying, you know, I'm gonna do my own studying, I'm gonna do my own work, uh, I'm gonna show you what the market is saying, uh, this isn't gonna be necessarily what Aaron thinks, this is gonna be what the market is telling me your home is worth, but I'm gonna do that tonight and be prepared to get, show you a full pricing presentation tomorrow. But do you have a price in mind? So kind of prefacing with, with I'm gonna do my work, I'm gonna do my all my due diligence, I'm gonna show you my work, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing, but do you have a price in mind? Okay, so by the time you get to this point, you'll usually have their personality honed in a little bit, and you'll figure out whether or not you should sidetrack it a little bit or if you can just ask it directly okay. yeah one thing i usually ask for like when i get to talk about pricing the first step is have you been paying attention to the market at all do you know like get a feel for you know what's going on in the market do you know what house in your neighborhood sold last and how much it sold for and then that way it gets them to start to thinking when you come back the second time because if they tell you they want 350 for their house and then they get online and realize that the last house tom johnson's only sold for 275 or they say I want 350 because Tom Johnson's house across the street sold for 375 but Tom Johnson's house has 2,000 extra square feet and you have bats when you go back to them they're not, not yeah, as that's, hesitant to that's a good way to ask it yeah good that's a good way to ask it all right so yeah all of these questions we want to kind of bring out first in a sit down first sit down conversation Right? By the end of these, if you probe a little bit and let them talk as much as they will, you'll have a pretty good understanding of what it is you're trying to get done here, as well as a good understanding of what, what you better focus on on the listing presentation in order to win them over. Okay. Now, before we move on, the, most of the rest of this packet is about the house itself. But before we move on to that, I would suggest while you're still sitting at the table, uh, I would suggest you come all the way back to the, the back of the packet here. And you could bring up this, this part as well as the, the last page. This part talks about a short property description as well as a long property description. Um, it depends on who you're talking to, but if you're a very talkative, creative person, then I would bring this out. If they're not, if they're analytical and pointed on the way they're looking at things, I may not even bring this part up. But this is about you creating a short property description um, for advertising and, and brochures. And so like I said, some analytical types, you're just gonna annoy them by bringing this out. Um, but the creative types will love you even more because they love doing this kind of stuff. So the idea here is just to kind of work on what you wanna say about the house and do that with them so they get some input and they feel like they're part of the, the group, okay? Now the back page on the, the screen here is a little bit harder to see, but on the, here's the, on the actual one here, you'll see the, um, on the last page like this, it's got this little check marks and things so while you're still sitting there, I'd recommend you go over this before you get up, go do the house, because typically what I've found is you get up, you start touring the house, it should take a while to do all that. And by the time you're done with that, everybody's kind of tired of each other, and so you kind of, okay, we're looking to see you tomorrow, and you kind of move on, and you'll forget to give this out, or I do anyway. So uh, I recommend just kind of going through this at the table. Now this does a few things. What's on here is, some documents and some things that they should get together for our next meeting, all right? And so what you do is just kind of tear this off and give it to them as a little check, check sheet for them to work on, give them some homework. So it does a few things. Number one, this is information that you, you need to know. It's helpful. Um, number two, it, it definitely ties them to that second visit. If they're willing to do the homework, if they're willing to do all this, there's no way they're gonna list with someone else before meeting with you again. They're just not, it's not gonna happen. 
So it, it's trying to help close that gap between step one and two on some homework items and keep them involved with you during that time off. All right, but it's talking about getting a tax bill together, um, their deed, um, proof of age of roof or siding. And I won't go through these necessarily one by one with them, but just kind of telling them anything you've got about the property. If you've got a survey, let's go find that. If you've got uh, the deed, go find that. And most of the time those are online and we can find those. So you can tell them that if you don't have it, great. But if you have the original, even better. Um, I'd love to get a copy of that. The utility bills, as an office, we're requiring you to grab utility bills uh, from clients, water bills, sewer bills, because uh, the state kind of has told us if, if you say it's on city sewer and it ends up being on a septic and you don't have proof that you saw that from somebody, like then we're liable. So that's why as an office, we have you collecting those. Um, so all this is stuff you kind of need anyway. So it's a good idea to have them start looking for all of it. It's also a good pre-close because if they're willing, if they're like, oh yeah, all right, let's, we'll, we'll look at this tonight, we'll go through this. And that tells you a lot, like they're ready to go, they like you, they're, you know, we're rock, rocking and rolling. If they're like, okay, well, we'll get to it if we can, that, that, that tells me a lot, all right? So it's another kind of precursor that way, okay? All right, then once you're kind of done with all these conversations, you wanna have the conversation about what we're gonna to do to look, look at the house. And the next step is to look through the house. You usually wanna start in the kitchen here, and the main idea of what we're doing is trying to build rapport and learn about the house. So if you're anything like me, I seem to forget details in general, but I, I really seem to forget details about houses because I see a lot of houses. I've been in my fair share of houses and frankly, they all kind of look the same <laughs> after a while. So you're, you're listing a house, you should care about their house, right? But sometimes it's easy to forget things. And there's nothing worse than listing someone's house and then you're having to call them back a half hour later and saying, hey, I'm getting your house on the multiple listing service. What kind of floors do you have? Like, it's a horrible conversation. I don't, I've done it many times. And they're like, okay, well, Aaron, they are hardwood floors. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I remember that. No, I don't. Um, but, you know, this helps you with that, right? Uh, it also kind of, people, psychology, people are lemmings off a cliff, right? They'll just follow you wherever you go. So if you just are asking questions like you need to know this stuff to get it in the multiple listing service, again, that's a preemptive close, right? It's an assumption close. I'm assuming you're listening to me. When we get back together tomorrow, we're going to go to a marketing plan and everything. This is information I need to get your house on MLS. If they are not into you or they're not sure yet, they, they know they're interviewing a bunch of other people, they'll usually stop you here. They'll say, well, we are gonna interview a bunch of other people. And that's okay, okay no problem. But this is how I work. I wanna know everything about your property so I can accurately price it. So again, that kind of puts you ahead of the game with other people, okay? So we're gonna start off with the kitchen and you just simply fill it out. You're not gonna fill out every single detail in these typically but go through it with them, show them the packet, show it to them. Man, we got a lot of info to get through here, all right? So I just wanna let you know, this is gonna take a little while, but I really wanna dig into your house with you so I fully understand where, where we are. I can maybe get come up with some ideas for you for staging, so just bear with me. It's gonna take a little time, but let's do this together. Obviously, it depends on how big the house is and how long it might, might take you to get through it all, okay? It's just about the time when you would ask you know, hey, are there any known issues with the kitchen as you see it right now? Sure, yeah, no, that's great. For each room, you can kind of go through that and say, hey, are there any known issues that, that you have here? Um, or you see something, you can point it out, what, what happened here, or what do you have? Yeah, that's good. So you take a 25 foot tape measure, actually measure the room size? You, you actually want to measure the rooms. Yeah, ideally you want to measure the rooms and you want to do it with them. So if at all possible, you have them help out with all of this. And, and just say, hey, you know, I, I'd love if you would join me in this together. Again, it's building rapport, becoming friends. You know, hey, you hold the tape measure there, we'll measure this together. 
or you could use a laser measure, which a lot of our engines have, and just pop, 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 and you, you know, get the measurements that way. You don't have to be perfect. We're not measuring the whole house right now. We're just measuring the room sizes. Um, it's helpful, but it also just shows that you care about the, the, you know, the rooms. But looking at countertops, what kind of countertop is it? You know, like looking at our countertops back there, from here, I could guess that they're, they're granite, but they're not, right? right. They're from mica, laminate. Um, yeah. So they're, you know, you just have to remember that because otherwise you might get home and you'd be like, in your mind, that's the image I remember. Like, oh, those look like granite from here. So you're really, they're not, right? So obviously that matters when you're looking at pricing and things like that. Asking them for the extras. Are these granite countertops or are these granite countertops that were shipped over from the Swiss Alps and they were yeah. dug by hands? Like, you know, sometimes there's really crazy features to things that you may not know. So having them tell you that stuff. Sometimes people have insulation in the walls. You're not going to see that. And we have R450 in this wall. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it's good to know. It's, it's very helpful, but. It, those kind of extras, okay. Complemental on some features that yes. you personally like. Good, thank you. Yes, all compliments at this point. Try to stay away from the major negatives. You're gonna be honest and you're gonna give negatives tomorrow, the next step. We're gonna go over things you saw, things I need to improve. But right now it's all positive, all positive. All right, yep. And of course, if you see pictures on the wall of them skiing and you like to ski and you talk about that and just build, continue to build that rapport. And then you move to each other room and kind of do the same thing. Write down what kind of flooring it has, what room size, what you're seeing in the home. And here's where I want to warn you and give you a little story. So you walk into a typical house, a typical bedroom, okay? So it's a kid's bedroom and say it's 14 by 12. Good size bedroom, nothing special, nothing huge, nothing small, just a good size bedroom. You walk in, it's got a closet, it's got a door, it's got a window. If you're anything like me, I'm not gonna speak for you, but if you're anything like me, I'm gonna walk in, it's a bedroom, and walk out, right? Absolutely what you don't wanna do here, okay? And here's my story, that I can only give you my own personal emotions. When I had a friend over to my, my own house, I had my daughter's room. She had a little painting on the wall. It was a pink room. It's a girl's room. It's a little girl's room, right? So my friend walks in and he's like, yup, it's a room and walks out. You ever had an adrenaline dump? Yeah. Turn red? I see it saying red because that's yeah. all I see, right? I wanted to knock his butt out. Right? Like emotionally, I hate you. I'm gonna kill you. And all he said was, yup, it's a room, which is exactly what I feel on everybody else's rooms. But why am why do I feel different? Because your baby. Because it's my daughter's and room. You painted that right? Room. I do it that Don't well. to me that's like you just hit my daughter, which means you die. Right. <laughs> right? So that's what the sellers are feeling. So you can't just walk into a room as a room as a room and not Take time, walk in there, take a breath, measure it. That's where the measuring is helpful because it takes you just 30 seconds to spend some time in the room, make some notes on the you know what's in here. But just remember that. And that's that's just, that's what I always remember because that was my feeling, like just absolute murder from what he said to me, which was exactly how I would feel walking into his house. Right? right? So just understand that that's the way people are. And so you, we're trying to build that rapport and build that relationship with them. So make sure they, they feel that from you, that you care. So the reason why like Jim Weikert says, this is what he would rather have rather than this is because of that, that emotional tie that you can build with people. If you do this, none of this matters. This is all great and good, but they care about listing with someone they like. And that, that's what this will do for you, okay? So take that time. And some of you are a lot more personable than I am. And so for me personally, knowing my own personality, I might go, 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 go. I'm just like my friend. 
who said, yep, it's a room. That's exactly how I feel too. Let's go, let's go, let's go. But you can't do that. You've got to spend that time. You've got to consciously tell yourself, slow down, spend that time with them. Do you have like any trigger, because I'm more like you in that matter, where I'm not great at small talk, and I would rather just, let's get this done. I wanna walk through your house and fill this out and come back to you with yeah. you know, my listing um, report. So do you have a trigger that you think of or something that makes you slow down so that hmm. you remember to have that small talk? Because I find myself not remembering to have small talk with people when I should be. So. I sometimes will come off cold because I don't have that 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 little trigger in my brain. Fair enough. Um, there's two things that came to mind when you said that. Number one is the packet, because by having the packet, it keeps me on task, and I'm going to keep talking about things. Right. Right. It's not getting to your small talk question, but it's letting me do that. Another thing that that I do think about and repeat to myself: be professional. Be professional, be professional. And to me, that means whatever it means in front of that client. Okay. So to some people that are more laid back and they're just chit chatting about everything but real estate, then that means that's what I'm gonna do too, okay. to be a professional and be with them. And to other people that are more like you, that are gonna be boom, 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 then maybe that means we cut back on some of that chit chat and we just say, okay, what I need for the MLS is to measure this room. Let's do that. Boom, 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 boom. And just keep you on task. So basically read the client and if they're more chatty, relaxed, be more chatty, relaxed. Yeah. Or if they're more a numbers person or, yeah. you know, okay. You got to read the room okay. uh, for sure. Okay. Um, when people are the opposite of me, usually the best thing to do is be quiet and mirror them. So what I mean is let them talk, because usually the people that are gonna be different than me are gonna be blah, 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 blah. And I'm just gonna have to be quiet and just be thinking about something else while they're talking. Um, but then, uh, what was I gonna say? So, yeah, so, so you let them let them talk um, and then mirror, mirror them. So to mirror somebody, you just look at their body language and try to mimic that and try to repeat the last thing they said to them. The last thing they said? Yes, the last thing they said. Like just repeating the last thing. If you practice that just for fun, if it's if it's entertainment to you, like it's hilarious how much people love you and, and think you're fantastic if you just practice mirroring them. It's biological, it is psychological, it is animal in us. That, that's what monkeys do. They they mirror each other to become friends. Like we, we do the same thing as people. And so if we just try to mirror their body language and repeating the last words to them, okay. that will solve everything, frankly. Um, and there certainly will be people you work with that you don't love, um, but it's okay as long as we have a business relationship. You know? So obviously every house is different, mm -hmm. but do you give a ballpark of, you should be able to get through your first listing appointment in no longer than two hours. Like, yeah. if it's taking you three to four hours to get through a 2,000 square foot house, you're either you're not working efficiently enough or talking too much, but what would you say, two hours? Less than that. Okay. For the step one, that for the first questionnaires, we'll go anywhere from five minutes at the very, very least. It's gotta take longer than that. Um, but it would take at least five minutes, but most of the time, 15 minute ish for the questions, depending how much they want to talk though, right? Because, and not to put anybody in a box, but it's true. If you find a single person, I don't care if they're 20 or they're 80, if you find a single person, you're going to be talking for a while. It just is true. So if they're, if they're sitting there and they just want to talk and you're going to let them talk. And so sometimes it might take a half hour, 40 minutes. Uh, but most of the time 15 20 is what i would be geared at for the questions and then maybe another 30 to 40 on the house so about an hour total um, but again it depends on the size of the house for that part if it's a small house it may not take that long at all uh, but the key is to really slow down and make sure they see that you care about their house that is the goal whatever that means so i'll, I'll answer your question um I feel like in, in business, one of the things that I've learned to do is I call it placing the crown. And if I just, like people respond so well to affirmation. And so when we like walk into a home and you just say it like, I want to place
place a crown on their head <laughs> and they can feel like oh, okay. they're the only people in the world that matter to me. And even if it's not like every single room I walk into, I have to make a compliment, but just in general, like place a crown, mm. it, that helps remind me, like not fluff them up, but hey, you know, I want to walk away from them feeling like they can puff their shoulders up a little bit more. And so that's kind of my trigger and I, when I walk into conversations is I want to affirm your situation, your your lifestyle, your whatever. Nobody's above or beneath anybody else. So I'm just going to place a crown on you and just at least say one or two things to make right. you feel validated. Okay. That's good. And right. that's kind of my reminder. Sure. Um, that's good. I would say if, if I, looking through all of this, um, one of the things that I know about myself is when you're talking about mirroring people, I come across as a high energy person and I, sometimes my energy can be really intimidating to people that are not ready to receive all of that. And uh -huh. so I have to remind myself to take a deep breath and match what, what vibes right. are they giving off? Like, are they cautious and leery and a little uncomfortable? And so if I come in like, ah, you know, yeah. it can be really overwhelming. And right. so I, um, I really appreciate what you're saying to like, I've had to learn to be more interested instead of interesting exactly. so instead of it being about me being interesting to them i have to learn to be interested in them and to mirror their energy and then give a little bit of myself as well that, that's great i think that's a good way to put it in life in general but especially in the sales side here you don't matter yeah oh that's horrible to say right. but it's true because in, in reality you don't care about me you care about you well, okay, but the sellers are thinking the same thing. Sure. And we all try to be nice to each other and all that good stuff, but they care about them and this is their money, this is their house. So what matters to them? Yep. Yeah. Good. All right, so that's the main purpose, right? And then we move on to the other points of interest. And this you could do while you're sitting down as well if you want, or it could just be part of the walkthrough where you do the external and look at the exterior of the property, what they got going on there, the garage situation, and just getting through all the details, right? Getting through all the details, the attic, the basement, do they have a radon system? Do they have an oil tank? Um, all those kind of questions that are helpful, uh, you just wanna work, work your way through, right? So it's pretty simple that way. I mean, it really is, like I said before, I can just give you the packet and say, go, follow it, and that's what we just talked about, right? But it is some of the, that psychology, okay. It is some of that psychology and other things that are helpful uh, as you're going through that. So like we said, say if we're finishing up the tour of the house and now we're gonna move on to the step two. As we're leaving the house, we, we, we reiterate again the homework that we're given. We have the, I forgot to bring one up here, but the little brochure that says, thank you for inviting me in. We hand that to them. And this has the date of our next visit, even if it's this afternoon at five, you just put that on there. Um, today at five o'clock, whatever. And just give that to them. It's another little reminder of when you're coming back. And you just say, great, thanks. And we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. So what, then after that visit, if we're coming back tomorrow, we've got several things to get done in order to come back for step two. And we're gonna talk about step two next week in a ton of detail but the preparation from now to step two i'd like to go over now so first thing you need to do if you have any time between now and then send a thank you right if you have a few days you can send a mail a mailer an actual thank you um, but if it's going to be tomorrow just a quick email is good or text is fine too depending again depending on their personality and who they are you might even send a fun little cute, you know, gift or something, you know, saying thanks for you know, having me in your house or whatever, whatever their personality is. But some kind of thank you for having me, looking forward to seeing you. That stuff goes a long way with people, those little things, all right? But we gotta get prepared for step two. So what are the things that we need to know before we come in for step two? What do we gotta get prepared? Pricing, the PTA, because you're with Weichert now. Sorry. So the PTA, the price trend analysis, but the pricing packet in general, right? The pricing packet. Mm -hmm. 
And then of course, our actual doors presentation, right? So I'm gonna just go over with you real quick where you find the doors presentation and how you adjust it. But the big thing is, I wanna talk about making sure we're truly customizing this for our client. Now there's a lot of things that we do on every property that won't change much, but there's also a lot of things that might change a lot. Like for instance, you might do a bare minimum 25 mailers on just listed cards because of where the house is and you wanna get the word out to the neighbors, but it's out in the middle of nowhere, so I don't wanna do a whole bunch of cards there. Or it might be that you're gonna do that plus 400 postcards to this apartment complex because you think somebody there surely is looking to buy their first house and this is a good fit for that. So think about your actual marketing plan and what you wanna do with things before you start putting that together, okay? So yeah, we need to come up with a pricing strategy and we need to come up with the actual listing presentation. Uh, we'll talk about doing the actual PTA and the pricing packet in a whole other class. That's this whole thing. That's a whole thing in itself. Uh, but just to show you where the, the listing packet is, um, we'll look here at the digital platform. And then you go into your contacts and you can create one or if they're already in there, great. But like uh, Mr. Benning House here, we can click on him and it's got everything we need right here. Now, we're gonna need the listing presentation, the pricing presentation, the leave behind, and any other products or things you wanna showcase during the listing presentation. So those might be water bottle labels like you can print off from here, the property business cards that you can print off from here, the, um, you might, might wanna bring a sample just listed postcard, what those look like, some sample advertisements that you've been doing in the past, anything like that that you might wanna bring to kinda of get that together. All right, when we click on listing presentation here, and this, this pulls up everything you've got here, you can adjust anything you want, um, add, add yourself to You can add yourself to the uh, presentation. Let's say you wanted to put Allison's picture in there. It's just, it just takes that, that long. That's all it takes to, to change this stuff out, right? So again, Allison and I and Beth will show you all the details here, but that, that's all you, you need to do with that. You can create new pages like the Matterport page here. You can create your own pages. Anything else marketing wise that you wanted to talk about, you can put that in here. Uh, so you just take some time. It really though, even if I had to start from absolute scratch and recreate four or five pages and adjust all the pages in here, it's still only gonna take me 15 minutes. So it doesn't take you that long once you have a plan of what you wanna go over and what you wanna say. Uh, we'll go over the actual pages next week, but uh, to create that, that's all it takes. And then you can print it here on our printer and prints out an 11 by 17 um, and prints out like that. So it's all you know, personalized to them. And then we've got these presentation folders for you to use, okay? So I recommend, I mean, obviously recommend you have that, but I also definitely recommend you bring the leave behind, which is in here as well. So the leave behind is something you bring to the listing to leave behind, right? It's pretty simple. But it's something you can print out. It prints out in eight and a half by 11 and then you can bind it here in the back, bind it up. And again, you can customize some pages like this here that talks about drones and Matterport and such in here. Um, but you can print out whatever pages you, you wanna use or add other pages. Um, but it's a good summary of the listing presentation, so you don't have to leave the whole presentation with them. It just gives them a good summary. There's a lot of language here that's pre-written um, on this letter page. Certainly read through that, make sure it fits everything that you wanted to say, add whatever else you wanted to add to that. Um, but the leave behind is very impactful. 
with people because again you're in competition with folks and even if you're not let's say you're listing your mother's house and you're not in competition she's gonna list with you no matter what you still want to go through all of these steps because the point is the emotional point to me is why would you give your mother less service than you do a, a total stranger that just seems wrong right so that's first of all, make sure you're giving the best service possible to everybody, including the people that will list with you no matter what you do. Um, but then also, just because they're your mother or your friend, they will want to give you referrals, but it is a matter of if somebody asks them directly and they say, yeah, yeah, give Rick a call, yeah. Or is it something that you did all of this and they're blown away and they're like, oh, hey, who needs to sell? Hey, have you seen my son, Rick? And they're, you know, right? right? So there's a big difference between somebody who would refer you to business and someone who insists that somebody use you. And you'll you'll earn that by going through all the steps. Well, because even as a parent or a close friend, they may know that you represent buyers and sellers in real estate, but until you show them what you actually do while working, right. they don't really know what you do and how you represent your buyers and sellers. Right. So they can say, yeah, Heather sells real estate, but until they see what you actually do and what you prepare for them, they don't really know what you do at your job. And I, I call that the glimmer in the eye, right? When you talk with someone about someone else, you can tell. Oh, absolutely. If, if they like, yeah, yeah, you should work with my son, yeah. Or they're like, you have no idea. You should see this guy. I know he's my son, but I'm telling you. You should see, like, it's there. You can feel it. You can see the difference when somebody talks about their kid or whatever, you know, their friend. So um, you want you want to build that referral business, especially with those social interaction clients, people that you know. Um, so make sure you're going through all the steps, all right? So again, next, next week we'll go over the actual listing presentation itself. But for step one, I know it's a pretty simple little class, like, hey, follow a book. But there is a lot of psychology in there. And again, the keys are just do it, follow the, the, the checklist, and then take your time with it. That, that's pretty much it. Um, let them talk, take time, just to have it. But there should be no stress on step one. Step two has got a little stress in it, it just naturally does. But step two is like zero stress. You're just going out to talk with someone, have a conversation. You don't have to remember every, anything because it's right there in front of you. So that's pretty much it. I found in step two that I probably did overkill with my clients and I was sensing that they they were ready to sign. I didn't have to go through line yeah. item by line item, which you don't want to, especially when it's upside down and you when you're letting them see it. Yeah. Is you just want to talk through that page and let them look at you, have any questions and turn the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. And yeah, we'll talk about that with that, but it, it is the same thing, you gotta read the room. Like I can do the listing presentation in five minutes, or I can do it in an hour. It just depends on who you're talking to. And like to your point, if you can tell like they're ready to sign, I still wanna get through my presentation. So I might just say, okay guys, bear with me. I just wanna show you what I'm doing. And then I'll go boom, 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 and just fly through it. But at least they still have seen it. I've talked about it briefly, but you're right. I mean, if you're ready to sign, you don't have to- The same way when I went over buyers, uh, in the book that you had us look at, and I knew that Vicki and Larry were ready to sign everything, but I went through it and uh, skipped over some of the pages, but I let them see the pages that I went through to right. get to the end, and then they were ready to sign. Yeah, and the buyer packet's a little different in that, yes, there's certain pages that are geared to making sure they're gonna sign a buyer agency, mm -hmm. so those I would move through quickly, but just because someone's willing to sign doesn't mean some of those questions I don't wanna still go over. like. You know the what are the steps of the buying process like frankly especially if you want to sign i want to go in detail about that make sure you understand the processes due diligence all that in a lot of detail um, but yes it, again reading the room speed it up for when you feel it's necessary and slow it down when you feel it's necessary all right we good on that any questions okay all right very good